The blue revolution, you have to imagine, when new technology stimulated the green revolution until late in the 1960s, and thereby increased agricultural production worldwide, the blue revolution started immediately after. And it's not yet finished. The blue revolution refers to the continued intensive growth of aquaculture worldwide. And we are in the midst of it. To date, aquaculture and fisheries provide over 3 billion people with 20% of their animal protein. And the contribution of aquaculture is growing. And so it should be. If we aim to feed a growing world population that may reach over 9 billion people in the, in the year 2050, we need to produce more fish protein. Right now, it is captured fisheries that supplies most of the fish protein. But the sustainable exploitation of these natural stocks has already been maximized. This means the increase in consumption of fish protein can best be realized by a further expansion and refinement of aquaculture. Even more so when you realize that right now only 2% of the world's food supply comes from the ocean, whereas 70% of our globe is covered by water. But also fish nutrition and health in on-land recirculating systems will increasingly support the enormous potential of aquaculture. Of course, by definition, a revolution will be followed by a new system. And this is where we can learn from the past. Think of issues such as the public's perception of intensification, pressure of infectious diseases and associated mortalities. Think of animal welfare. We realize the importance of the lessons learned from the Green Revolution. At my group, we consider the concept of circularity as presently being developed for livestock, should also become an important guiding principle for the aquaculture systems of the future. The key point of this concept is that livestock should not consume products that can also be directly eaten by humans. And the same principle applies to aquaculture. But it will require their own circular approach. Aquaculture will need to start feeding down the trophic levels and concentrate on biomass not directly eaten by humans. Fish in aquaculture should avoid feed food competition, so fish should not eat other fish, but should feed on insects or leftovers or omega-3 fatty acids from microalgae or seaweed and maintain their health in circular aquaculture systems. I am convinced that with the help of such resource-efficient aquaculture systems, both in the marine environment and on land, be it recirculating or not, we can fulfill the world's current and future needs for nutritious proteins from fish.